Hi, welcome to the Bobby Show here on Buzz and Potato. And joining me as always is Martin McCornison. How are you doing? Mate? I don't know what we're doing now. We're, 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 we're both hey, slimmer. We're both looking slimmer. You can chair down a couple of chairs. Yeah, he had to get a blue and lower chain. He's about seven foot taller than me. But anyway, but how are you keeping me? Yeah, really, really, really good. There's, you know, sorry about this background noise. No, no, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been uh, very busy. We're now about sort of kind of through the August, September. Yeah. You know, sort of uh, school holiday, quiet time. And, you know, if it continues. And you've got more staff. Yes, one more starting yeah. tomorrow. And tomorrow as well, yeah. You're going to need a bigger place. Uh, you run out of desk pay. No, I'd like an office for myself, but <laughs> being, uh, <laughs> the next dream. So today, guys, what we're going to talk about is mine's kind of going to give his experience and advice about things that, well, common problems that people do when they're buying or renting a property. Because, mm. you know, I know myself, like when you come out here, it's all brand new, like, oh, I want to live here. This is great. And you just dive in. And sometimes I think, like, the eagerness to dive in can often cause you many problems. I mean, what are the common, like, five sort of most common things that you've seen in your experience have been in many, many years. What, what are the things you say, look guys, yes, I know you want to live here, be it renting or buying, but think about these things. Yeah, I mean, I mean the one nice thing though is to see like um, clients and um, expressions when you do show them some mansion, yeah. like a, a high floor sea view or a, a house with a pool, you know, it's just, because we get the yeah. joy of that, you know, yeah. it's like what keeps us, you know, interested in our careers, but, um, I suppose um, just, yeah, taking that sort of minute to soak up what the property is. Yeah. Um, but then sort of putting the practical head on, um, you know, sticking the cornerstone, for example. You know, we have, we enjoyed your first moment, but we are the practical. So, you know, uh, opening cupboard doors, kitchen cupboard doors, for example, you know, just to have a look under the sink. You know, is there like, yeah, there's a watermarks, you know, sort of or signs of you know, the drain not working, turning on taps, turning on light. Yeah. Turning on TVs. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's silly where sometimes, and, you know, we have seen it and it's so frustrating. I don't mean to say it's only time. But for example, there's a beautiful TV on the wall. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. And yeah. then we tell the owner it doesn't work and they're going, no, I know. So when you're looking at a property, is it is it best advised to like take a big step back, get a pen and paper, and just write all these things down? I mean, obviously you're experienced, but guys that maybe aren't experienced, I mean, you know, the, the object of what I want to get across today is, look, guys, these are things that commonly happen that you've got to really take your time with. So is it like an inventory kind of thing? Kind of. I mean, again, if somebody was sort of sitting in front of me, it's like a repetitive thing for me. Um, so, like, let's say we're going out to see five properties. Yeah. Okay. The one thing that I try to sort of shoehorn in there is that. I don't own these properties. Yeah. So if you walk in and you don't get that 20 seconds of, yeah. let's move on. Okay. okay. And I can save our time rather than wandering around and, you know, you letting me think, oh, yeah, well, this is nice. And then look, let's get out. Okay. And let's get to the next property, which maybe you do have that wow factor on, because then we've got a little bit of extra time that we can just sit on the sofa, you know, just have a little mm. minute to yourself, just have a look, you know, with us. Like a small condo, sometimes the walls start to come in, you know. Yeah. Uh, and you sort of think, blimey, I'm gonna like, have like three or four lads around to watch the football game or whatever that you were dreaming of. Um, but no, for us, you know, if you then say, okay, I'm, this this is a nice uh, property, I'll be interested. You know, it's just okay. Let's just turn the taps on. You know, let's turn the shower on. Let's have a look at water pressure. Um, let's see if the hot water, you know, is, is you know, it's it's silly things. But if we can save the time on the properties that aren't of interest then we gain that on something that you are interested in. And, you know, we'll just have a ponder around. Mm. Is it like a hot location at the moment? Is there an area that's up, up and coming, developing, that people are sort of showing more interest in in other areas? Um, not really. I mean, everybody's different. And again, you know, you said it a few times, it's our job to listen to what people are looking for. Um, you know, because everyone's got different needs. Do they walk a dog? Do, you know, do they want to be, you know, take the work down on the beach? Have they got kids? Have they got schools and what have you? Um, so no, just as long as somebody understands what they want, then it's our job to make sure that we, you know, try sure. to run them in the right direction. But, um, no, I mean, you know, Padia City is still very, very popular. I mean, it to go to your buzzing bar. So <laughs> and living down there, soy cow and yeah. come and see Trevor is great. Rivers a bar. <laughs> As you know, I wouldn't rent them out to be dog, but anyway, um, I mean, when you talk about I mean, we mentioned about dogs. It's, it's quite an interesting point because I think a lot of people don't do that. And like where I live in my condo in here, right, there are no dogs. But I've got a friend of mine that is not far away from me and he's got about seven dogs around him. And that's something that I think people tend to just ignore. They don't really look around like how close to the local shop. You know, if you run out your pint of milk 
Have you got a gambling motorbike or your car to go and get one, or can you just walk and go and get one? You know, I've got. Um, um, I was looking at a house, so I was potentially interested in buying. Yeah. Uh, um, it was in um, uh, just off a of soy Siam country club. Oh, no. Nice. And um, very pretty house. Impressed with the sort of like the, the the layout, the land size, and everything else. But I did exactly, genuinely, what I just mentioned. I sat on the sofa, okay, and then just soaked it all in. And I hadn't noticed it until that point. Ah. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there's chickens. Yeah. That's it. I'm not buying it. Yeah. Where, where, I, live, where I live up in the village, man, that's my alarm clock. Yeah. Three, three, four o'clock in the morning, they're going out of the tent that does you like, oh man, please give it a rest. Yeah. So I, I can keep, keep my own advice. I just sat down on the sofa and just literally just letting it all, because again, you always like it and you're looking for this, you're looking for that. Everything that looks really nice yeah. grabs your attention, but you don't then see other things. Mm. And that's just, yeah, take a seat down and just. Yeah, give, give yourself a minute. And talking about the actual problem itself, I mean, one of the things that is often overlooked is the internet provider. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you go into a property, is it guaranteed that internet's available? I mean, I know some locations just not. Mm -hmm. And when you've actually got these, I mean, you mentioned earlier on about if you do go away and you, you leave the box in there, I mean, just explain a bit about that, because that's something I never even knew about. Well, yeah, so I mean, just to clarify, okay, so three, uh, pardon, uh, internet. So most buildings now have fiber optic yeah okay? so we advertise you know like a paradise park or a grand avenue you know fiber optic that doesn't necessarily mean that it's connected directly to the room yeah but the grand avenue have the availability of fiber optic i've got you um a lot of places now already have the connection of fiber optic so it's not as rare as before but if it's not then there's about a three thousand baht connection fee and then i mean the great thing is though like for 700 baht it's like a gig one gigabyte. I know, it's crazy. It's unbelievable. Crazy price. Um, but yeah, um, so one of the re weird things with 3BB that we've experienced is that as a foreigner, we have to pay a year up front. <laughs> um, for that, we actually only pay for 11 months, not 12 months. So you get okay. money for free. But if after the year you leave, yeah, you leave to go back to your home country for a couple of years or whatever, um, the one thing that they do is they say that you must return the router. Yeah. And, and if you yeah. don't, they don't cancel the contracts. So even though they're not asking you for money, when you come back in a year or two years from wherever you've been, yeah. when you go to 3BB, they'll show you a bill for the last two years of outstanding oh, connection. Nice, there you go, guys. Make sure you take the way back. If you don't, you're looking at... Uh, four, buy a route to yourself and then tell them they'll need it. Right, okay, I'm with you. Okay, well, there's a good tip, guys. Um, in terms of paperwork, are there any common mistakes in terms of like, doing your paperwork when you're looking at buying or renting a property? Um, buying or renting, so I suppose, I mean, I'm renting, I mean, make sure you're comfortable with the contract, you know, everyone's got their opinions of what, you know, should be mentioned in there, you know, um, a lot of people are quite relaxed and our contracts obviously have evolved and, you know, they're pretty substantial, yeah, um, up till now, but it's not, you know, every contract works for people, we have added and removed clauses, um, for rentals, I mean, things like pets, um, is something that needs to be mentioned right up front before we add it to contract. Okay, no. Um, subletting, um, so, you know, it's a contract between either yourself or the owner, um, you know, unless you mention, you know, I intend to rent this for Airbnb, then that's a complete and separate conversation and that's probably going to change the rental price as well because they're going to want a share of everything knowing that there's potential damage. Um, and then making sure that, you know, once you've signed, once you've checked in, that somebody has done the tm13 so you just mentioned about tm13 I mean, yeah. can you explain a bit more what a tm30 is for people watching that don't know what that means sure it's um it's it's a paper that it te it states in thai law that it's a, it's a homeowner's responsibility to report um their tenant living in the property okay 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 um now we always tell the the landlord okay these I mean, we can complete all the paperwork this is your responsibility go down to immigration if they don't want to go down to immigration, we can do it for them. Just give Understood. one of my girls a little bit of money and they'll go and do it on their behalf. But another important fact is that the strange thing about Thai law, and again, I know that people can say, oh, I don't do it, I don't bother. It doesn't matter. But in actual fact, we see it where like, people are in six months going back for their education visa or this visa or whatever, and the immigration will pick any hole they can. Mm -hmm. And they'll go, well, look, in actual fact, you came back to Thailand um on the 1st of september but you didn't come and do a new tm30 
even though wow. we're going back to the same address that maybe three months ago you moved into with a TM30, by their law, if you return back to the country, you must go back to immigration within 24, 48 hours to report, hi, I'm back. Hello, I'm back. And nothing, get a new one. Wow. Well, there you go. So make sure you don't make that mistake, guys. It's uh, late. No. It's always it's always when it's too late. Yeah, it's never a problem. I don't think it's a problem. Is it? And once you need it, you're in the deep. Yeah. Uh, talk about needed things. Now, there's a lot of confusion going on about it, and I get asked these questions all the time, and I'm not very good at it, so hence why you are here. Right. Deposits, well, you're here. Yeah. Deposits. Well, yeah, I want to <laughs> share your knowledge. So we're sharing your deposits. I mean, is it still three months? Is it a month? I mean, it's such a, <clears throat> for me, it's a minefield. So, I mean, explain it. It's got it's more interesting on. because you did one with uh, one of my uh, staff about five or six months ago, Kumbor. Um Okay, so we obviously, it's a hot topic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've got on the screen just so I can read it, okay? But uh, how do I say it? Okay, the, I, the law, so to say. Yeah. The, the thing that came out about the new, I think it was 2018 um, uh, rental laws, don't apply to an individual owner. Okay. okay, they apply, and the word that DD Property use in is... Got your master word now. They, they call it business operator. Okay, so did a little bit. Let me just read here. Um, where does it say about the, what a business operator... Oh, I can tell you anyway. A business operator is somebody that owns more than five properties. Five, okay. okay. And this was all geared to guest housing. It's all like... Um, Sometimes you see guys uh, that have got like multiple units in a condominium, like an old condo. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kind of run it as a different name to the rest of the condo. Um, so what they were doing, um, there's a couple of condos here, I mean, uh, Paddy City Resort, for example, um, where there's somebody, there's a management company looking after all of these units, um, more than five. Okay. okay. But they're trying to charge six bar electric. And we're saying that you can't do that because... Okay, going back, section whatever it is, 2018, any business operator owning more than five properties cannot ask for more than a one-month security deposit, cannot charge more than the government rate for utilities, and must return a security deposit within seven days. And if the tenant gives them at least a one-month notice, they're allowed to break their contract and collect the security deposit. Wow. Now, this is business operators. It's not you owning a house and I want to rent from you. Because then you've got the personal aspect as well. And I don't mean to sort of sound bullying or something like that. I, you know, I, we get this all the time. But yeah, imagine it from an owner's point of view. Again, I, I, I understand it from the tenant's point of view. Let me just clarify that. Yeah. Sympathise, empathise, whatever. The people are like, yeah, but I'm going to pay the deposit. I'm never going to get it back. As I've mentioned on your Discord, everything... I could, I could count on, and again, 18 years, I could probably count on two pounds how many experiences where a landlord's been an absolute arse and not given back the deposit. Normally, we find, can't guarantee, you know, say 10 times in 18 years, that, you know, but most landlords that are going to dick about don't come through agents. Yeah, they yeah. advertise on Facebook, they advertise on whatever Bart sold, they put for rent size outside their house. You know, we do approach these people to ask if we can take the list in. And more often than not, they say we don't want to work with agents. Mm. Yeah, so understand it from kind of warnings. But um, yeah, exactly. Understand it from these owners' perspectives. They don't want an agent to then market it. It's like, well, look, we've got customers waiting. We can rent this this week. Not interested. No. That's the warning flag for us. How, how, I mean, if I were, so if I go up to a person and they're renting a house, I mean, how do I know that they've got more than five properties? You don't. So is it up to their owners to make sure that they keep it in the... In I, it's, it's virtually impossible. I mean, but like I say, it was geared and written for guest houses. Okay. Like my office is below um, five shop houses where the owner at the end owns all five. He's blocked the staircases off for all of, the, all of these four rooms. The building at the end is like the office and attached to the side is a staircase. That staircase goes up here and covers three floors and he's got front and back roots. Okay. Owns more than five. Can only take a one month deposit, cannot mess around with the electricity and utilities. You know, this is why sometimes you see a guest house and they're advertising like 500 baht a night. 
it's only because they're going to make it up because they're charging you like 100 baht for water and 10 baht yeah. for the electricity, you know? Um, but that's their sort of key thing. Again, they've got to be treading on sort of uh, thin ice because obviously if they haven't registered as a hotel, then they shouldn't be doing daily, weekly anyway. Again, it's minimum of one month, yeah. like Airbnb and what have you. You know, it happens. Let's not get into that bit. But, you know, as an owner, you know, they're, they're inviting somebody into their home, okay? As an agent, we will charge a one-month fee to manage the property for, for a 12-month yeah. period. Yeah. The prices that, you know, you get for a 12-month are based on a 12-month. You know, sometimes if somebody rented something for three months, they might ask 50,000 baht. But if they rent it for 12 months, they might offer it at 40,000, 35,000 baht, you know, because obviously it's give a discount to get a, a, a lot sure. of thing. Yeah. So then if you leave in three months, you know, they could have got 50,000 times three. They have only offered it for a year of 35,000. You know, their compensation is a security deposit. Okay. Um, likewise, you know, somebody goes in completely trashes a place. You know, people say, oh, yeah, it's just a chair. It's this, it's a couple of thousand baht. Um, but it's the, it's the headache as well. You have to take care of it. Um, and yeah, I only think it means they smash stuff up for, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars. Um, but to clarify the, 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 the position right at the end, genuinely, I'm not lying, you know, we very, very rarely find owners that, that are not prepared to give a deposit back. Um, we will always approach an owner and a tenant within 45 days of the expiry date. Okay. So, Mr. Tenant, are you planning on extending? And if you are, fantastic, we'll get you a new contract. If you say no, then we will inform the owner that you are planning on leaving. We'll give them an opportunity to come and visit the house. We'll then get our inventory folder that we do on check-in, and we'll email it to both people, tenant and owner. Okay? Ideally for the tenant, if you're really, really kind-hearted, if you can put everything back to match the photos, then when we go through, you know, we could just go, yep, 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 happy days. Um, so it's just, you know, the process of preparing for checkout, um, is, I don't know, we handle it differently. Do you have to notify the water and the electric when you're moving out of property or is that the owner's on the... Um, no, I mean, what we normally do is we'll ask the tenant to hold their most previous bill. Um, so then when you're checking out, we'll just go and look at the unit number for the water, unit number for the electric. You know, from the last bill, you know, let's say it was 100 units and it was 400 baht, you know, it was 4 baht a unit, you know, so, you know, the last bill was paid at 150, it's now on 200. Oh, it's, so, it's easy, 200 baht. Yeah, you know, we can, we can work it out like that. Some owners do say, I would like to wait until the bills come through. Um, most don't, but, you know, again, if that's the, if that's the owner's prerogative, um, you know, how clean the condo or house is as well. And, you know, that's probably one where sometimes the owner could be a little bit more finicky. You say, well, I've tinged it. And they're like, yeah, but pull the drawers out and stuff like that. And you can say it's wear and tear. Um, that's probably the only very small kind of gray area. But, you know, if it's a smooth process, you know, and it, it requires a deep clean, but you get your deposit back, you know, flip there for a year. In terms of like looking at buying a property, so let's just say I've seen a house, I think, do you know what, I like that. Is there a recommended amount that you should pay as a deposit? I mean, if someone said, well, pay us half and pay the other half when you complete or something. I mean, is there anything you should be wary of in that situation? Um, so, hmm. there is no hard or fast. I mean, um, there was a little bit of background noise earlier. Um, in actual fact, um, it's uh, 13 million but the guy's paying 10% deposit and then he's going to pay the balance in January. Okay. Um, so what's that, like a three-month yeah. period? That's just because the buyer's returning back to their home country. Um, no, I mean, you know, it's it's a discussion, it's a negotiation, you know, what works for everybody. Um, sometimes the seller will ask for the deposit. Um, very common for Thai to expect to receive the deposit. Okay. Um, in most cases... We try to suggest at the beginning that we hold the deposit. Yeah. And I'm like, here's a contract. There you go. We're holding the deposit until transfer. I'm not saying like if we can get away with it, but you know, we're kind of sitting in the middle. Um, but if somebody's using a lawyer, then you know, I would pass all of the not yeah the due diligence, the recommendations, and let the lawyer take it on. You know, they can completely subdue you. But um, there isn't no. I mean. Um, 50% now is, I would say, excessive. You know, I've seen 
I think it depends on the value of the property, you know, like 50% of like 50 billion is there a lot of money in ka uh, um, And also, you know, it's going to be the time frame of getting that money or whatever the balance is, you know, is it already here? If we're talking about condo and it's foreign name, that could be a problem, but... Uh, Does, do people have to prove where the money come from? For a foreign name condo, yes. For a condo, what about house? Oh, okay, so you've got to prove where your money's coming from a condo, but not fat count. Uh, it's because of the foreign ownership. Oh, of course, yeah, because they have yeah. one only there. Yeah, so a condo, if you've a foreign name, you must be able to show that the money came in from an overseas country in foreign currency, and, that, and now there's even a purpose. So you put one out to buy the place 101 or, you know, Sanctuary B405. Wow, but that's to qualify for foreign name for us as foreigners. If you buy... Thai company, nobody cares. Uh, Thai name, Thai name, nobody cares. But it's only because in a condo, we have the opportunity to own the title deed. And for that, they want to see what's called a foreign exchange document or Tor Tor Sam, as it's called in Thai. And that's that we've got um, a Danish guy right now. So again, this is probably good to know that we sold a condo and they went back to Denmark. You have got all the power of attorneys to be able to transfer the condo um, on their behalf. They went back to Denmark to send the money. We told them multiple times, but they missed the understanding and they transferred Krona to their Thai bank account in Krona. Yeah. And then from the Thai bank, their Thai bank account to ours. Doesn't work. Really? No, because they're not here. The document will be at the receiving. So the, okay. the, 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 the foreign exchange is going to be in their Thai bank here in Denmark. So we had to send all the money back. Isn't that Denmark? Wow. And now they've transferred it all directly to us. So then we can go to the receiving bank, which is our client account at Bank Pop Bank, and we can arrange that docking. So just by not listing, they've got transfer fees coming in, transfer fees going back, transfer fees coming in the correct way. Yeah. There you go, guys. Make sure you listen. Well, this has been great listening to what you uh, told us, and thank you very much for sharing. It's been brilliant. No worries. What I would say, guys, is have a look at our Discord because on Discord, Mark is very active on there in this brand new properties that are coming up on, on their system here for rent as well as for sale. So if you are in the, uh, the marketplace for either renting or, or buying, get on Discord, have a work on, even come up here. We're opposite Big C, uh, just off South Potato Road. Can't miss him. There's plenty of parking here. So just come up and uh, while you're having a look in here to win a mine, send the missus across the road to Big C and she can go buy some bits and pieces. I reckon that's why you picked this location. Uh, car parking. Go on, darling. Have a go. Yeah, Off yeah, you yeah. go. Just car parking. Really. Well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. No Guys, all jokes aside, come up here. Come at the corner stone. Uh, I'll put all the details in the link in the description below. Have a look on our Discord. If you're not on there already, get on there, guys. Check it out. There's a wealth of information. They might not help you with as whatever inquiries you want. It's very, very helpful. Help. And uh, there's a huge array of staff here to help you out. Yeah. are better looking than Martin. So, uh, that's my honor. <laughs> I like seeing these to you. I think, I think we're quite equal. Kind of. <laughs> anyway, that's it for me. That's it for Mike. Thank you very much for watching, you guys. Uh, as always, please remember, hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon. If you'd like to be notified when we bring out a new video, check on Discord, like I just mentioned. Have a look on there. There's an active room here for Cornerstone, so please jump in there. Ask any questions you want. You know, if you're looking for some requirements, whatever, so check it out on Discord. And uh, have a look at our TikTok and our Instagram. It's growing so rapidly now. We've got m many, many thousands of followers on there. It really is fantastic. And now that we're short snippets and uh, of what's going on, I'm going to speak to mine when we finish this video and, and just talk to her about that because uh, I think it's something they can bring to our channel as well. So we'll talk about that later. And if you'd like to support the channel, uh, there's a link to our members there on our website, buzzingpatea.com. Left-hand menu, bottle icon. Have a look on there and it will show you there what I can't show you on here. All right, that's it for me. That's it for mine. Thank you very much for watching. And please, as always, wherever you are in the world, stay safe.